I'm going to be going through the whole chapter, but I'm not going to read it initially. We'll just go through it as we go. Genesis 24. Important verse, Genesis 24, and go to verse 27. Verse 27. Let me read that. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Important phrase there, I being in the way, the Lord led me. I being in the way, the Lord led me. And here as his servant, Abraham's servant specifically, we see a picture of the servant of God and his walk with him. We need to be in the way to have God lead us. If we really want to be truly spirit-led, be in the way. First and foremost, be in the way in as much as Christ is the way. He said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. A habit that I've gotten into is taking a red pencil, and every time I see the way in the Bible, and it's all throughout the Bible, I underline it, the way, the way. Christ is the way. He said that of himself. And if you look at verse 1 in Genesis 24, it says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. If we're to be blessed in all things, we need to be in the way. We need to be in Christ. Honestly, no one is truly blessed, especially in all things, unless they are in Christ. Being in the way, being in Christ, the Lord shall lead you. The second point is being in the way of servitude. And what I'm going to walk, through, walk us through today, keep in mind, are several points through this servant's life and his testimony here where he was in the way and God worked and led in his life and I believe as Christians today especially we need to be in the way and have God lead us things are changing things are different things are uh, you know as the world says you know no, I don't even know the term that they use <laughs> that, that, that generic term that th things are always changing we're in this fluid situation right so we need to be more than ever led of the spirit Asking those questions, what should I do with my day? What should I do with my life? What should I do in this decision? It needs to come from a spot of being led of God. And to be led of God, you need to be in the way. The next point, being led in the way of servitude. Look at verse 2. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And so being in the way of servitude, this servant worked under Abraham. The Bible records that not only was he a servant to Abraham, he was the eldest servant of Abraham. And as such, he actually ruled over all that Abraham had. So a servant doesn't always automatically instantly mean that you're in submission and below everybody and everything. Here, this servant was responsible over many, responsible over much things. He ruled over all that Abraham had. He was the eldest servant, and therefore, he had experience. Therefore, he had proven himself faithful. He had proven himself capable to do what Abraham had expected of him. And you need to grow to the point that you would be an elder servant unto your God. Being in the way of servitude, also being one that is able to have great responsibility in that um, job that you're given. Verse 5, it continues and talks about the relationship between the master and his servant. Look at verse 5. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. This is an interesting dynamic. We see that this, the master trusted this servant enough to even give this sort of back and forth opportunity. 
When was the last time you thought to yourself, should I question God? Should I ask for clarity on this command? It's a fearful thing, I think, for a lot of us to go to God when he commands us something and said, well, what if this doesn't happen that way? Should I do this instead? Almost reasoning and going back and forth with God. Trusting that the, it shows that the master actually trusted the servants enough that they could have this personal relationship where they could back and forth. They could reason one with another as the servant showed with Abraham and we need to be in that spot led of God being in the way of servitude where we're trusted that we can even go back and forth and reason with God verse 7 it says the Lord God of heaven which took me from my father's house and from my land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land he shall send his angel before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence and if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. And so ultimately the servant, though he did back and forth with the master based on the command, ultimately he was obedient above all things. He pledged by a word that he would obey the command as it was given and go in the power of God here. Abraham, as the master says, the Lord of heaven will lead thee and Christ will come to you and he'll say, hey, I need you to do this task. I want you to do this job. I need you to go hear from me and he will promise the same unto you. The Lord God of heaven will be with you and he will fulfill these promises. And if it doesn't happen exactly as I said, then you'll be free of this oath. He's saying, hey, if I don't keep my word, you're free of the oath but God always keeps his word and so this is the confidence that the prophet of God I believe here had with his servant so being in the way of servitude the Lord led me the Lord will lead you if you're in the way of servitude next preparedness look at verse 10 it says and the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Being in the way of preparedness, the Lord will lead you. If you're in the way of preparedness or resourcefulness, God will lead you in his spirit. Here he used the goods of his master as a good steward ought to. The Bible says that it's required of stewards that they be found faithful. And so a faithful steward will have great opportunity to use what God has. And that's exactly what a steward is. Us as Christians, 1 Corinthians 4 says that we are stewards of the, mis the mysteries of God. As ministers of Christ, you are a steward and you have at your disposal and you have the resources of the mysteries of God in your hand. You have the very word of God, the most powerful tool in the entire universe God has entrusted you with as a minister of Christ. And you are able to use this tool, use this weapon, use this armor, use this gift to benefit others around you. God wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be in the way of preparedness and then he will lead you use the armor use the weapons use the gift god has provided you to get the work done and i believe every one of us has a particular gift maybe more that god has given you for the benefit of your family and friends for the benefit of this church and the family that is here for the benefit of those that you haven't even met yet you have gifts that are there so that you can use them. But you got to be prepared and you got to be resourceful. And here we found the servant, he took of the camels that were his master and used them to get the job done. Being in the way of preparedness. Be prepared for what's ahead of you. Be resourceful. Have awareness of the gifts that you have. Have awareness of the talents, the armor, the weapons that God has given you. Be aware of them and be ready to use them. That's called being prepared or being resourceful. And we found that here in Abraham's servant. May God find it in you that he may lead you as you're prepared in that way. Prayerfulness. Continue on in verse 12. It says, And he said, O Lord God, of my master Abraham, I pray thee, 
Send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down the pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink and she shall say drink and I will give thy camels drink also let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. So here we have that old phrase, ask and ye shall uh, receive, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. And in our Christian life, ye have not because ye ask not. Prayer is your most aggressive, most strong, most intimidating offensive weapon. In fact, when you look at the whole armor of God, all of your armor is the front and all of it is defensive. Your weapon is the word of God and prayer will actually get things done in that venue. Be prayerful, be offensive in your servitude to God. Being in the way of prayerfulness, trust that God will lead you and we all need to grow in this area. I know it. We see Jesus often finding a a place apart, even disappearing from the sight of his disciples. And when they found him, he was praying in, in fellowship with God. And we need to be found so. Being in the way of prayerfulness, that's where God will lead you. That's where God will really get things done and help you to fulfill his will in your life. And that's ultimately what we should all want. God's will to be done in our life. His number one will for you is that you were saved. Now, the saved need to get to work. How are you going to get to work? Well, if you're not serving, if you're not prepared, if you're not prayerful, God will not lead you or he'll have a harder time leading you. We need to be in these ways, the way of servitude, the way of prayerfulness, and the way of preparedness in order to get things done for the kingdom of God. The next is watchfulness. Being in the way of watchfulness, the Lord led me. Look at verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, that now how many times have you had those prayers where you literally bowed your head and you were just about to be done your prayer and then the fulfillment was coming your way it's wonderful to see that i believe if we're prepared in that way if we're praying in that way god will lead us in the same way where we can pray and see it done in real time for us and this is what happened as he was leaving off speaking It came to pass before he had even done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him to drink. And when she had done giving him to drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. In the way of watchfulness, you're praying and almost expecting the solution, the answer to be right in front of you. You're watching, you're waiting, you're expecting. And that's how we need to be in prayer. That's prayer without wavering. He that wavereth is as a wave of the sea, tossed, right? If you're wavering and you're not faithful in your prayers, if you're not expecting God to answer you, then don't be surprised when he doesn't. But you see this here servant, he went to God and said, God, I'm going to go down to this place where I know the women are gathered. I'm going to say to one of the women that I need water for myself. And God, whatever woman it is, if you should choose her for thy servant, if you should choose her for my master, then Lord, have it be that she will not only fulfill my desire in giving me water, but she will also offer herself and provide for the camels that are here. He literally gave God the answer that he expected. And in the spirit of watchfulness, he was watching and expecting it to play out just like that. And that's exactly what happened. And that's how we need to be led in the way of watchfulness. And that's where God will lead you in his ways and in his desires and what he wants for your life to come to pass. 
Continuing, we want to see the way of wandering in your life. The way of wandering, I guess, it would be better phrased. Verse 21, it says, And the man wandering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it's the way of wandering or, or analyzing or, or, or looking at, regarding the situation. So the Bible records that Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. And it continues, it says, for there are many false prophets gone out into the world. And so we can pray things out loud, and I believe that God Almighty is not the only one that's hearing your prayers, but there may be demonic influences in the vicinity, familiar spirits to you, waiting to hear your prayers and trying to trip you up by answering them. And so he doesn't just immediately say, oh God, this is the woman, this is exactly what I prayed for, because there are many false prophets gone into the world. And so he then wonders at her, holding his peace, right, covering his mouth, to wit, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. He's looking, he's watching. Is this the fulfillment of what I said? Or is this just a coincidence? Or is this just me trying to put my own feelings and emotions upon the scenario? Or is this really God prospering my journey? Verse 22, And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets, for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? Here, he's trying to figure out whose house she belongs to. And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, Moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender of Nuf, and room to lodge in. Remember, it wasn't just that she had to come down to the well and say a certain thing and do a certain thing, but the spirit needed to be tried to determine whether she was of the house that she was supposed to be. Those things needed to be fulfilled for him to realize that this is the true blessing. This is the true provision. This is God making my journey prosperous. We need to be in the way of wandering. We need to hold our peace and watch when scenarios come to pass. Is this a diversion? Is this, is this a delusion? Is this a lie? Is this a coincidence? Is this just my flesh trying to say, oh yeah, God's answering my prayers? That's big in charismatic groups where they pray something and then they kind of make it come to pass in their own way. But the reality here was realized when she fulfilled not just two of the necessities, but the third, and she is the house of Nahor. As the master of the servant had sent him to find. Verse 7, what is naturally next? And the next is being in the way of worship. The Lord led me. Verse 26, let's be in the way of worship as this man. And it said, and the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth, I being in the way the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And so he here is giving all the praise unto the God of Abraham. He's giving all the praise and the glory unto the way. He's simply going about his way that he was being led of because he was doing these things right, I believe. God's mercy showed through, his truth showed through, and there was a fulfillment of the things as promised. He was prosperous. Why? Because God led him as he was in the way. And I love that. A lot of people pray, God, what would you have me to do? And then they sit on the couch, right? This records that the, the servant was up in the way best he knew how. He was going in a certain direction, following the way, the best way that he knew how. And in that path, God led him. Being in the way, the Lord led me. And we need to be the same way. Get up, get active, get to it, and ask God after these things and seek after him and do the best that you can and to follow his way. And he will lead you and lead you in these opportunities. Being in the way of worship, reflecting, giving praise unto God is a great way for God to step into your life and lead you according to His will. Verse, 20, or verse 29, being in the way of blessing, the Lord led me. The damsel in verse 28, she runs and tells the whole household these things. 
Verse 29, it says, And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and the bracelets upon his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, and he stood by the camels of the well. So being in the way of blessing, first we see the shared blessing. He had much riches that were given him, that he had authority over, that he had available to him because he was in preparation and he was resourceful, and he gave them unto Rebekah. And when Rebekah showed up, it was that blessing that was shared from the servant that immediately let them know that she had been with the man of God. She had been with the servant of God. She had been with something strange had happened, something wonderful had happened, and they saw it immediately. That shared blessing revealed this to him. Next we see the seen blessing, verse 31. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. There was a scene blessing. The world looked upon the servant of Abraham, the servant of God. The world ought to look upon you and see the blessing and know that you are blessed of the Lord. Blessed of the Lord. Not blessed of your talents, not blessed of your education, not blessed of your abilities, but clearly blessed of God is what, uh, what he saw at this moment when he looked upon him. That's the uh, seen blessing. Next we find the received blessing. Verse 32. And the man came into the house and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, speak on. So the received blessing. First the servant shared the blessing with Rebecca. Then those of her family saw the blessings of God upon him. And then he received the blessing as a result. And we need to be found in the way of blessing. And look, that blessing isn't just gimme, 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 right? My name is Jimmy. I'll take all you give me. It's not like get, get, get and that sort of thing. No, this blessing we see is threefold. It's shared. Then it's seen. Then it's received, then it's shared, then it's seen, then it's received. And I believe that's how the Christians ought to be blessed. We need to be blessed in giving and receiving. You know what Christ said? It's more blessed to give than to receive. We need to be giving people by and large. Try it. Try to outgive God. Okay? Try it and see what happens. Shared blessing, seen blessing, received blessing, share blessing, receive blessing, and have it seen of men all around you. The next thing is being found in the way of testimony, the Lord will lead you. Look at verse 34. We'll read all the way down to verse 48. Verse 34, this is a stretch. And he said, I am Abraham's servant, and the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath given, he hath given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this mine oath when thou comest to my kindred. And if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear of mine oath. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my ways which I go. Behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of my pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in mine heart, Behold, 
Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water, and I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camel's drink also. So I drank, and she made the camel's drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. It says in 1 Peter 3.15, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We ought to be ready to testify. Amen. We ought to be ready to tell others of the great things God hath done. Hey, you look happy today. Yeah, I slept well. You know, we are all guilty of this. You look like you're doing really well. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I, I got a good paycheck. You know, we always have some other thing that we're going to say without giving the glory to God. And that ought to be first. This is exactly what the servant here did. And we need to be found in the way of testimony and God will lead you there. I love this because he says the master Abraham's God led him in the right way to take this daughter, to take this woman. God led him in the right way, but up until as that testimony rolled out, up until that point as the testimony rolled out, it seemed like he was just kind of going about his own way. But the reality is, is he was seeking God. He was seeking what his master wanted. He wanted to serve. He wanted to be the best servant that he could be. And being in that way, being in the way of righteousness here, God led him in the right way. He literally guided his steps. And that's what we need. We need to be in the way of testimony. And this is why I've started as a church to start to encourage people to testify and to give testimonies. It's a powerful thing and it's an important thing. And it's part of being led by God. And if you want to be blessed of God and have him lead you, you need to be prepared to tell everybody what he's done in the past. If you want to move forward in things in the future. You need to be in the way of servitude. You need to be in the way of preparedness, in the way of prayerfulness, watchfulness, wandering, worship, in the way of blessing, and also the way of testimony, being ready to tell everybody of all that God has done to bring you to this point where you were so abundantly blessed and led in the right way and standing in the right way and in the way of truth. And God has worked in your life. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. How are you so happy with COVID destroying everything? How are you so happy in lockdown? How are you so happy when your kids can't play in the park? How are you so happy when you can't go into Walmart without a mask? How are you so happy? Why? Because God has led me to this point. Because I was in the way and he led me and he's done this in my life and that in my life. And I'm blessed in this way and that when you continue on in the way of testimony. Verse 49 continues and said, And now, if you will deal truly and kindly, kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. We've got nothing to say. And the whole purpose of our testimony is to bring people to the point where they got nothing to say. That the whole world, their mouths may be stopped. That's what our testimony is for. Mm -hmm. Our testimony is to be part of Scripture and part of our experience. And the whole world's mouth must be stopped by these things. Nothing to say. That the whole world would see and fear the Lord God. That was the whole ministry of Israel. That was the whole ministry and is the whole ministry of the church today is to testify of the Savior and in doing so, stop mouths. And in doing so, cause them to see and to fear and to proclaim the only thing possible is this thing proceeded from the Lord. Amen. This is of God. Nothing else could have made this come to pass. Being in the way of testimony the Lord will lead you. And you see, as we walk through these, you might want to write them down later. These are going to give us basically just a, a pathway of life. The way. We're finding the way. Not only is it Christ, but it's how this servant got the job done for his master. And this is what we need to learn. 
We need to learn how to be servants that get things done for the master, being in the way the Lord led me. He's the one that aligns your steps. He's the one that guides you this way or that way. He's the one that times things perfectly so that all peoples involved arrive to that point in time at the exact time that God specified so that the exact will of God would be done. But you need to be in the way in order to get that done. You need to be following after. I believe these steps, these examples that Abraham's servant is showing us. Being in the way of prosperity then, the Lord leads you. Look at verse 51. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife as the Lord hath spoken. It seems easy. That was an easy one, right? Because why? Because they saw the hand of God on it and couldn't deny it. I can't speak to thee both neither bad nor good. This is clearly of God. And so they say, here's Rebecca, take her. Verse 22, and it says, And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. Nothing wrong with a little more worship. We're talking about prosperity here. Verse 53, And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the man that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten. After that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not. Seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, send me away, that I may go unto my master. He had success in all the things that were listed previous. All of his journey that ended up in his testimony was of great success because he was following after what his master wanted. He was following and serving his master above all things. And he gives praise unto God. And this prosperity, it isn't, again, getting, getting, getting. Yeah, he got a meal. Yeah, he got provender. Yeah, he got a place to sleep that night. That's fine. But if you notice, he's the one giving the silver. He's giving the jewels. He's giving the costly and precious things unto the family he's there. He's prosperous, and yet he's actually losing in the financial realm. That's a whole new spin on prosperity. What we think of when we think of prosperity, a lot of us think of money and riches and wealth. This prosperity is the fact that he fulfilled the will of God. That is prosperity. The Bible says in Joshua 1 and verse 8, prosperity and good success comes from meditating upon the word day and night. That's where we get prosperity. That's where we get good success in our life from having the word of God written in our hearts and having the word of God be what leads us. Being in the way of the scriptures, the Lord will lead you. And that's where your success comes from. That's where your prosperity comes from. God will prosper your ways if you're seeking him and trying to serve him as the master. Being in the way of influence, continue on down in verse 57. It says, and they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Very clearly, just, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, her, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate, those which hate them. And so there's the blessing that comes upon her. But you see then that, this servant was given and was in the way of influence and God led him accordingly. Certainly God touched the heart of a woman that, that said simply, I will go. How often does God call out to people in the Bible and said, who will? And the response is, I will go. And we see the hand of God here upon this woman, none doubting. And all she's responding to is everything that we've seen up to this point. We saw the testimony of all that God has done. And I believe she had the same reaction. This thing proceedeth from the Lord. And so she was immediately involved. She was influenced by, not by his way to manipulate, not, you know, that, that, that book, how to, how to Win Friends and Manipulate, I mean, Influence People, <laughs> that type of thing. That, that's not what happened here. It was the testimony of a righteous and holy and powerful God working in this scenario that caused her to say, 
I will go. None doubting, no doubt, no, no worry, no concern. She said, I will go with this man. Even after her mother and her brother said, let's ask her what she thinks. And they were probably thinking she might want to stay another 10 days. But she's like, no, I will go. Reporting for duty, reporting for service. Why? Because she was influenced. And if you're in the way of influence, God will lead you. His testimony influenced her to follow her to receive blessings down the road. He came out, and even those closest to her allowed for this to happen only because of his influence through God's influence in his life. And this is why it's so important as us as Christians to be blameless. This is why it's so important for us to be of good report so that when we come into contact with somebody, I mean, if just think of the scenario. You walk up to somebody, you've only known them for 24 hours, and you're like, I'm going to take your daughter with me. Here's a bunch of jewels, right? If you're not blameless, if you're not of good report with them or, that are without, nobody's going to just hand over their daughter. No righteous person anyway. But here, the trust was established. And it wasn't because this servant was some great man. It was because this servant served a wonderful master who represented a wonderful God. And the power was seen in his testimony, being in the way of influence. And we need to be able to influence people. We need people to be able to look into our lives and trust our intentions and trust that we are looking out for them. Trust that we love them. Do people look at you and say, wow, this man really loves me. When you go to a door and when you knock on the door and you try to be in the way of soul winning and you, and you follow some of these steps like you're serving God, you're prepared, you have all your resources, tracks in hand and Bible in the pocket. When you're prayerful before you go, when you're watchful and, and waiting for God to immediately answer those prayers, when you're wondering, saying, is this that miracle that I just asked for? When you're worshiping God, when he brings things to a head and makes it happen, when you receive the blessing and you come to church and you testify of these things and show all these people and all your friends and all, those, all of your lost family members and what have you of the prosperity that God has given you do you influence others by all these things does that cause people to to want to draw nigh unto your God to want to say I will go is that what your testimony has done for people we need a testimony that does that and it all comes by being in the way like we just saw this servant walk this journey of trying to please his master that's all he's trying to do he's just trying to be a humble servant pleasing his master we need to have that same testimony. Being in the way of influence, the Lord leads us. We need to be in the way of faithfulness. Look at verse 62. Verse 62, the Bible says, And Isaac came. Did I miss one here? Nope. Verse 62, And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lahorai, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. When she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, here's the last time we'll see him. She had said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done, again giving his testimony. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The first thing he says is, it is my master. Who is this? It is my master. And then she lights off the camel, rushes to see him after preparing herself to, to be humble before him, covering covering her face, and and, and, uh, and and she goes and sees him. But we see here that ultimately the faithfulness of the servant is encapsulated in the fact that he's not getting glory here. He's not, he's not reaping a big reward. He is simply content to have the job done. And that's what faithfulness is. Faithfulness is not about me. Faithfulness is about my master. Faithfulness is about others. Faithfulness is about bringing the woman unto the master, bringing the person at the door unto the master, bringing your loved one unto the master. That's what faithfulness is all about. There's no glory in it for himself because even when it comes time to receive glory of himself, what is he giving them? His testimony. He told Isaac all the things that had been done, all the things that he had done. And his testimony would be the same as we've already read. God did this. He led me here. He showed me this. I asked for this. He answered it this way. And this is how I knew when I was 
finally finalized that this was of your household, then I went to the house and I showed them all these things and they said, there's nothing but the hand of God. And that's what the testimony should bring and that's what our faithfulness should show. And as a church, I think we ought to react this way. I think we ought to live this way. More and more, it's, I think it's going to be difficult for us to have any kind of routine, let's say, any kind of schedule. <laughs> <clears throat> scheduled soul winning time. Well, if they know you're going to come there every time, then they're going to nab you for it, right? Let's let's think of a time when it's banned. Right. Okay, scheduled church time. If they know that there's a time where they're going to meet, they're going to they're going to nab us for it, right? Who knows what the future holds? We need to be in the way, following Christ in His will, and allow for Him to lead us. Times are tough. They call them unprecedented. That was a word I wanted. Unprecedented times. The situation is fluid, and you know what the reality is 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 though the world sees this as unprecedented, our precedent didn't change. Our command didn't change. And here we are in Genesis 24, way back in history, a real event that happened through a servant serving his master who is of God. We see a situation that gives us revelation of what to do today. The command is no different. The, the, the line of reasoning, the instructions, the, the way is not different. It has not changed. And as a church, we need to get back to the basics of Genesis 25. We need to get back to the basics of Genesis 24 is actually what we read here. A Christ-led life, being in the way, which is Christ, Christ leads you. That's what we need more of. And that's what we need to start doing in our lives. Follow these examples and these steps. Be a servant. Okay? Be prepared. Be resourceful. Have everything that you need available to get the job done. Be prayerful. We got to do that in the morning when we get up. Pray to God and say, God, lead me. God, show me. God, direct me. God, guide me. And then watch. Pray specifically like this servant did. Specifically, God, I want you to lead me to one man that wants to hear the gospel. Lord, even have him ask me, what must I do to be saved? God, that's what I want today. That's what I want to see today. And then watch for it. Wait for it. Be prepared. Have everything ready. Have that track ready for him. Have it like accumulated sweaty and the ink's all fall off because you're just, you got it in your pocket and you're just ready to fling it out as soon as God answers that prayer and puts him in front of you. Be watchful. Be wondering when it happens. That person comes to you and you're ready. You're ready. Is this the man? Is this the guy? You give him the gospel track. You start preaching unto him and then worship and praise God for all that he has done in answering that prayer. Receive the blessing. Are you willing to give that blessing back out to people and testify? Testimony. That's going to encourage yourself to tell the story. You know, I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love, right? Tell it again, tell it again, tell it again, tell that story again. Let everybody that's a believer know your story. Show unbelievers your story about how God's working miracles, and they'll be like, you're nuts, but just tell it to them anyways. Testify of these things. It may be that one might hear and fear God as a result of what God has done in your life and say that wonderful statement, this thing proceedeth from the Lord. What must I do to be saved? Maybe hearing the testimony of you getting somebody saved will cause somebody else to be, I want that too, right? And they might receive prosperity. This is what God wants to do. He wants to prosper you. God doesn't want you to just fail. He doesn't want you to fall and falter, get discouraged. He wants you to prosper, but he has an order of things. He has a way, and it's the way. This is what God wants you to do. Influence then, to lead. Influence to, to affect others, to encourage others, to strengthen others towards all that's happened here. Faithfulness. Be faithful. Be found faithful. And that's required in stewards. You need to be continuing steadfast in these things, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and that reciprocates the whole thing. Wake up again, be found faithful in the same direction, in the same way, and go through it again. Serving God, watchfulness, prayerfulness, all that. Do it all over again, all over again. And that's a faithful heart. We need to be led of Christ. Being in the way the Lord led me. I want that more in my life. Being in the way. Already doing what God wants. Best I know, I think God wants me to go that way. I don't know why, but that's where God wants me. I've already prayed for what's going to happen. And you know what? I start marching left. And if God really wanted me to go right, you know what he's going to do? Being in the way, he'll lead me. He'll somehow bring me around to where I needed to be. And then the prayer will be fulfilled. Or he'll just redirect the whole universe in order to get everybody in that direction, that way that I had started off on to. That's how God works. And that's how big and powerful God is. This thing proceedeth from the Lord. I want everybody to be able to say that. And we need more of that in our Christian life. Day by day, moment by moment, spirit-led Christianity. That's what's going to 
affect this world in a very real way. No more, I believe, is the routine going to be what gets people strong. It's going to have to be not like the, not, what I mean is like the routine, like, you know, Sunday night, you know, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, prayer meeting, that kind of, that kind of religious routine and rigmarole. No, I think in the future, it's going to be a daily routine, a moment routine of watching after God, following after God, seeking God, desiring him to be in your every moment, desiring him to lead you in your every whim and controlling you and really strengthening you and emboldening you to do the work that he has. And these from this servant are just a few things that we can follow after, get as a pattern in our lives to be able to do great and wonderful things. Be in the way. Christ is the way and let Christ lead you. That's all that we need for the future. That's what, that, that's the oldest tale in the book. Right? This is not some new thing that I'm bringing up. This is the basics. Let's get back to the basics. Genesis 24 shows us how to be in the way and have God lead you in that same way and in that same path. And I'm thank you for it. Thank you, God, for this day.